Hi, good morning. My name is Andrew Olson and today I'm going to show you how to do an alignment on your Porsche 928 at home. Uh, the first thing that we need to talk about though is the mechanism that we're using. Um, I'm using this laser level that's attached to some aluminum square tubing. I think you can kind of get a sense of what that looks like here. Uh, these laser levels are not um, well, there used to be some cheap ones available at Harbor Freight. They're kind of hard to come by nowadays. But basically, if you can, you can still find them here and there, but I think they're a little bit more expensive nowadays. But the idea is to make this set up so that it can clear the middle of the wheel. I think you can kind of see how there's some clearance there. And it just sits down on the bottom edge of the rim and on the top edge of the rim. Okay? And actually, we'll probably be using it more horizontally than vertically. And then we'll be using the laser to shoot a beam back at the rear wheel. Okay? But the basic thing though is you need to build this contraption. I've got this one. Uh, I think I've got, I drilled a couple holes into the bottom of the laser level and I just uh, screwed it on there and I made some additional holes here to get different sizes for different rim widths so I could help my friends with their alignments as well. I also put a little black electrical tape on the back side of the uh, square tubing just to protect the rims from getting all scratched up. All right, next up is, um, I, I think this is a very critical part here, and this is the use of a steering rack centering bolt. You can get this from uh, 928 Specialists. Uh, I bought this a few years ago. It was like five bucks. Um, so it, not terribly expensive. Just throw it in with your next order. It's a good, good thing to have. I tried making one. It was just, I couldn't find the right thread pitch, and uh, it's just cheaper and easier to just buy it from, from one of your local uh, or one of your favorite 928 suppliers. Anyway, uh, in order to install it, what I do is I use some uh, ramps, but uh, the angle is just a little too much, so I use a couple scrap 2x4s, which just gets me over the, the initial incline so I don't scrape up the spoiler. So next thing, I'll have it up in the air and we'll install the steering rack centering bolt. Okay, here we are underneath the car. This right here is the uh, cover for the steering rack centering bolt. So we'll go ahead and uh, unscrew this and then we'll install the bolt. Uh, as I'm tightening this up, um, it's probably good to just, uh, before you install this, to make sure that your steering uh, wheel is pretty much centered. When you look in here, you'll see a little indentation. That should be right pretty much lined up. This will just lock it in place. You know, my, I know that my wheels are pretty much straight, but uh, this is not going to straighten out your wheels necessarily. It'll just keep the rack centered, and from there we'll make our corrections after that. All right, we have our steering rack centering bolt in. I uh, just should point out that you should try and make your steering wheel as straight as possible before you install that. Also, while you're under here and you've got access to it, now would be a good time to loosen up the uh, uh, tie rod nuts. I don't know if you can see it. I'll get over here. There we go. There's one right there. And then there's one on the other side as well, right down there. Okay, so you want to probably just crack those. I think you need a uh, 15 millimeter to hold the tie rod and a 19 millimeter to crack the nut. Um, and then uh, just get that just just a little bit loose, just so it'll make it easier to adjust it a little bit later. Okay, let's take a second to talk about what we need uh, to do this project. I suppose I should have done this at the beginning. Uh, you're going to need a wire coat hanger, you're going to need that laser level job that I talked about, a couple of um, bungee cords. I was wrong on the wrench, you're going to need a 22 millimeter wrench and a 15 millimeter wrench in order to crack the uh, tie rod nuts. A big screwdriver, a couple slip plates, I got these from Harbor Freight, uh, I think I got them on sale for 100 bucks. Some masking tape, uh, these are some pink stir sticks that I've cut down and I drilled a hole in the corner and you'll see about that in a minute. And then you're also going to need a tape measure. I prefer one that has centimeters on it. It's just a whole lot easier for, uh, for measuring things out. So let's get started on the next step. Okay, you can see I've got the laser level mounted onto my uh, front wheel vertically using the bungee cord. It doesn't take much to hold it in place. And I've got a piece of tape down on the floor here. And I've got the laser beam mark, uh, marking pretty much straight up and down. And we're going to make a mark right here. What this is going to do, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and we'll measure across, and that will give us our front track width. And that's critical for uh, the measure of the trapezoid that we're basically calculating. 
Okay, I've taken a moment to reposition the laser level horizontally on the uh, front wheel. And I've also taken the time to take one of those paint stir sticks and half of the coat hanger. And I've just put the coat hanger through that hole and I've taken the center cap off. And I've just hung that basically straight out from the wheel. You may have to reposition your coat hanger. And uh, I want to credit Earl Gilstrom for this technique. I think it's a wonderful technique. And uh, basically you can see the laser dot right here on there. And I'm going to mark that with uh, my Sharpie pen. And you'll see what we do next. Okay, I forgot to uh, mention that uh, you're also going to need a plumb bob. And what basically you need to do is transfer that laser mark down to the ground. Now I've run into a little problem here because of my big fat tires here that the plumb bob can't quite make it in. I'm, I'm hitting the edge of the tire when I come in. And so what I'm going to have to do is kind of estimate, I've got about, I don't know, a quarter inch. I'm going to mark it on the, uh, on the stir stick and then also mark where it is on the ground and then I'll transfer the mark inward. Uh, but basically, uh, Hopefully you won't have this problem, but if you do, you'll, I'm sure, can figure out a way to get the transfer down. Basically, we need to do this so that we can understand what the rear track is. All right, I have now transferred uh, the laser level over onto the driver's side, and I've marked down on the bottom where the laser is uh, in relation to the wheel. And I've also set up the paint stir stick on the back, and I've sighted a laser beam down there, and I'm going to mark that and then transfer the mark down to the floor. Okay, I finished transferring the uh, rear mark to the ground uh, on another piece of blue tape. Now we need to remove everything off of the wheels and position the slip plates right in front of the tire so that we can uh, bring it up onto the slip plate. So next you'll see that and then we'll take some measurements. Okay, I've now positioned the car up onto the slip plates, but what this really does for me, and why we did all the measurements beforehand, is that now I can measure across underneath the car here from this blue tape over to the other blue tape on the other side. So I can get my front track. See how that's behind the wheel now? And I can also do the same thing for the rear. So we'll take those measurements and then we'll go ahead and punch them into uh, my handy dandy alignment calculator and we should be ready to go for our final adjustments. If you don't have a partner to help you measure, what I've done is I've locked my tape measure. Again, I like a tape measure that has centimeters on it. And so what I've done is I've burned 10 centimeters on this side and just set it right above my mark, right on 10. And if we go over to the other side, you want to be as accurate as you can. I've got uh, here it shows 198.1, I would guess. So uh, I got to burn off, uh, off 10 centimeters though. So 188.1 centimeters or 1881 millimeters. All right. Uh, the next up, you got to measure the mark that came off from the uh, on the stick. Um, from the center of the rear wheel. On this one, it appears that I've got 61, I don't think you can see that, but 61 millimeters. And on the other side, I had uh, 64 millimeters. There we go. Alright, so here what I've done is I've entered in the different values here on my handy dandy spreadsheet. Uh, front wheelbase, 1881. I'm sorry, not wheelbase, track, front track, 1881 millimeters. The rear is 1888 millimeters. Uh, my left wheelbase is 2483. My right one came out to be 2491. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, just uh, some oddities there. But uh, anyway, it takes the average of the two, so it really doesn't uh, shouldn't shouldn't make that big of a difference. Uh, my right stick that I measured from the uh, end of the stick to where the laser marked it was 61 millimeters. The driver's side was 64 point or 64 millimeters. And when I punch that all into the calculator, it says that my value should be between 64 and 66. So looks like my uh, driver's side uh, toe is uh, ever so slightly towed in, and the um, passenger side is towed in a little bit more. And so we'll need to 
uh, bring that back out just a little bit. So we'll do that next. One thing that I should point out, now that I have uh, my values of what I need, uh, what was it, between 64 and 66, what I'd like to do is take that and go ahead and transfer it onto the sticks right now, and then these will be the sticks that I'll use forever now. And now I don't have to go through all this measuring stuff, I can just put the sticks on and just turn the toe until it's you know, in, in the marks that I want. So my next step, I'm going to mark 64, mil 64 millimeters and 66 millimeters on the stick here, and that will give me my range where I need to be. Alright, I've gone ahead and marked uh, both of my sticks to show where the 64 and 66 millimeter marks are. It's not a big spread, but it's enough that I can get the laser beam pretty much right in the middle there, and that's what I'm going to shoot for on both of these. Is we're going to just put the laser beam right in the middle on both of them. Okay, as you can see, we've got our uh, uh, stick back onto the wheel. You can see the laser beams on my original mark. Now I'm going to get out of the car, and I'm going to adjust the high rod. Remember, we've already loosened up the nut, so it shouldn't be too hard to turn. Uh, in case I've got my 15 millimeter wrench with me, and let's see if I can sight this and grab it at the same time. Boy, it's a little tough. This is where a partner helps. There we go. You can see as I turn it, I'm right now in the middle my mark of where I want it to be. So now I'll lock down the lock nut and uh, this side is done. Okay, I reconnected the uh, laser level on the driver side. I pulled the pins on the slip plates. We'll come back here, we'll check it out. And it's, I think it's pretty close. It's probably hard for you guys to see, but um, it, you know, my mark uh, between 64 and 66 millimeters, um, the laser is, you know, right there. So I'm not going to bother changing this side. I'm just going to tighten up the lock nut and call it good. Okay, I've uh, locked down the tie rod lock nut, and I've inserted the pins in the slip plate so I can drive it off if I want. I need to replace the uh, center caps in the rear. But uh, that's basically how you do a front end toe alignment. You can also do caster and uh, uh, camber. However, um, I built a camber gauge and I was just testing it out and it doesn't quite uh, fit the bill. So I got some modifications to do to it. But basically, the idea is to set up something that will sit on the rim of the wheel and then I'm using a plumb bob and a scale down here that's hopefully calibrated. It'll tell you how many degrees of camber uh, negative camber that you're running. Uh, appears that I'm running about uh, maybe half a degree of camber and I believe that's about spec. I'll have to double check that but I see that my gauge is not sitting on my wheel quite straight so I'll have to figure out a different way to mount this on there. Anyway, that's uh, what I've got for you today. Hopefully there'll be a future installment done uh, caster and camber uh, for uh, the front wheels and then camber for the rear wheels at a later date. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.